Hello players, so we got rid of the tracking sensors with the Quest and the Rift S, but sometimes the tracking still does its own thing. Here's a quick five minute rundown of simple things that might throw off your tracking. Let's take a look at lights, not directly of course, that's dangerous. Your standard household lights normally output at 50 or 60 hertz depending on your country. The Oculus software should detect this automatically but it can be adjusted in the settings. Having too much, too little or uneven light can be a problem because inside out requires light and neither headset will work in the dark. Luckily, there's quite a big tolerance for light and there shouldn't be any issues under normal conditions. But if you're using big studio lights like these or standing a couple of inches away from a light bulb because, you know, as you do, this can cause interference. The best way to check if light is causing you a problem is to use the pass-through mode. In pass-through mode, you are basically seeing what the software is seeing. So have a look around in pass-through mode to see if you can see anything that looks like a glowing sun. That means the light is probably too bright. But as long as about 80% of what you're looking at is visible, then you should be fine. If you can't see anything in pass-through, the light is too low, and if you see horrible flickering, that's how you know your 50, 60 hertz setting is wrong. Hertz, don't it? Reflective surfaces can cause issues as well. Inside out tracking uses infrared, so any surfaces like mirrors, portals, windows, or high vis clothing that shine IR back to its source can interfere. This is quite unlikely to cause issues unless you're playing VR directly in front of a mirror, and don't lie, we all done that. Sometimes simply restarting your PC can bring everything back. And while you're restarting your PC, you can check for prints. I found prints! No, no, fingerprints. I don't think so. <laughs> Night, everybody. The sensors on the headset can get covered in fingerprints. You can clean these with a microfiber or glasses cleaning cloth like this one. The dirtier the sensors are will result in poorer tracking. You may also want to check the cable for any damage. Although if the cable is damaged, you may have more issues than just tracking. Battery level can also have an effect. When batteries get close to being flat, they suffer from what is attractively called voltage sag. It happens to all of us when we are near the end. All that it means is the batteries can't deliver the same 1.5 volts that's rated for and drops off to about 1.4 volts. I use Amazon Basics rechargeables and haven't had any issues. I've heard the best rechargeables are the Panasonic AnyLoop, AnyLoop Pros, as with all lithium ion batteries, they're happiest between 80 and 20%. So once they get to about two thirds depleted, swap them out and put them on charge. If you are still using disposables in 2019, well, it's 2019. You need to save the planet and use rechargeables. Go planet! I haven't had any issues with batteries coming loose, but some people have, especially when making fast movements in Beat Saber, and it can cause tracking to drop out for a few seconds. You can make the batteries fit more snugly by wrapping a label around them or inserting some tinfoil in the flat end, although anyone who has used rechargeables will tell you that they are a pretty snug fit already. That about wraps it up. Oh, bonus tip. If you smoke, vape, or live in a disco, the smoke will disperse the infrared light and can interfere if you are close enough. Thanks for watching, guys. Links for cloths, batteries, and other VR paraphernalia are in the description below. And until next time, keep playing. I like standing videos. <laughs>